Hello everyone, this is Lucia from My Hiding Place. Today I'm bringing you a word entitled, Who is Israel? Dear brothers and sisters, this video is essentially made up by two large chunks taken from previous documents. One of the biggest lies ever told, the Battle of Gog and Magog, and Who are the Two Witnesses? Part 1. If you have already listened to those words, you don't need to go through this again. This video is more for those who may have missed this very important revelation, as it is the foundation of other documents I have provided on this channel. This is to explain who does Yah say Israel is. I don't usually say this, but please share this video. Thank you. Ezekiel 37 19 to 22 say to them this is what Gya says behold I am going to take the stick of Joseph which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel his companions and I will put them with it with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and they will be one in my hand the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. And say to them, This is what Yah says, Behold, I am going to take the sons of Israel from among the nations where they have gone, and I will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel and one king will be king for all of them. And they will no longer be two nations, and no longer be divided into two kingdoms. Romans 11, 7, 11, and 25 What then? What Israel is seeking, it has not obtained. But those who were chosen obtained it, and the rest were hardened. I say then, did they not stumble so as to fall, did they? Far from it, but by their wrongdoing salvation has come to the Gentiles to make them jealous. A partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Romans 11 tells us about a hardening that has occurred on behalf of the Jews in order for salvation to be extended to the Gentiles. When a Gentile is saved by the blood of Yeshua, they become part of the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. They become grafted branches into one identity, which is Israel. Hence why Romans 11.26 says, And so all Israel will be saved. When Yah talks about the regathering of Israel in his word, he is not referring to the political state of Israel, but rather to his people those who have believed in him. When this regathering occurs, the Bible says that he will be our Elohim and we will be his people. Genesis 12, 2-3 Yah's promise to Abraham And I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Galatians 3, 6-8 and 26-29 Just as Abraham believed Elohim, and it was credited to him as righteousness, therefore recognize that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. The scripture, foreseeing that Elohim would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you, for ye are all sons and daughters of Elohim through faith in Yeshua the Christ. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Yeshua the Christ. 
And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Deuteronomy 7, 6-9 For you are a holy people to Yah. Yah, your Elohim, has chosen you to be a people for his personal possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Yah did not make you his beloved, nor chose you because you were greater in number than any of the peoples, since you were the fewest of all peoples. But because Yah loved you and kept the oath which he swore to your forefathers, Yah brought you out by a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Yah your Elohim, he is Elohim, the faithful Elohim, who keeps his covenant and his faithfulness to a thousand generations for those who love him and keep his commandments. Father has chosen himself a people, the Israelites, to be his people and him to be their Elohim. But time and time again the Israelites proved themselves to be disobedient and rebellious towards Father. So Father decided to send Yeshua as the ultimate test to see if they would recognize him as their Messiah. But they did not. Remember Yeshua told his disciples in Matthew 10, 5-6 not to go to the Gentiles, but to go to the lost sheep of Israel. That was before Acts 1, 4 and 8 when Yeshua said to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit and they were commissioned to go out to the whole world and preach the gospel to all nations. All the Gentiles who have believed and will believe represent those who have been and will be grafted as explained in Romans 11. Hosea 1.10 Yet the number of the sons of Israel will be like the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor counted. And in the place where it is said to them, You are not my people, it will be said to them, You are the sons of the living Elohim. Hosea's daughter was named Lorwama, which means not loved. She represented father's heartbreak toward adulterous Israel. Yet in Hosea 1.7 we read, But I will take pity on the house of Judah and save them by Yah their Elohim, and will not save them by bow, sword, battle, horses, or horsemen. This salvation and reconciliation has come to us through Yeshua's precious blood shed on the cross. The Bible says that it is not those descending literally from the seed of Abraham that are Israel, but rather the children of the promise that through Isaac his offspring would be reckoned. In other words, it is not the natural children of Abraham who are Elohim's children, but the children of the promise. In fact, if it was Abraham's natural seed that produced Israel, then all of his children would be considered children of Elohim. Moreover, Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Yet Elohim said, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. Did you know that Abraham had eight children? Aside from Isaac and Ishmael, he had six more with his second wife, Keturah. You can read this in Genesis 25, verses 1 to 4. Romans 9, 6b to 8 For they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Elohim, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Galatians 3.29 And if he be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. That is, if you belong to Christ, as in, do the things that Yeshua asks you to do, 
then you are part of Abraham's seed. Matthew 3, 9 And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. John 10, 16 And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Matthew twelve forty six to 50 While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. I conclude with one last passage, where we see a confrontation between Yeshua and the Jews that believed in Yeshua. These claimed to be Abraham's sons, but Yeshua confirmed that they were of their father, the devil. Note that believing in Yeshua does not make you part of him, for even the demons know him and shudder. But you are required to die to yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him daily. For faith without deeds is dead. John eight thirty one to 58 Then said Yeshua to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How seest thou he shall be made free? Yeshua answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house for ever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but he seek to kill me, because my word had no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and he do that which he have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yeshua saith unto them, If he were Abraham's children, he would do the works of Abraham. But now he seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of Elohim. This did not Abraham. He do the deeds of your father. Then said they th to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even Elohim. Yeshua said unto them, If Elohim were your Father, he would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from Elohim. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh for he, of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, he believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of Elohim, Heareth Elohim's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of Elohim.